It's planting season, and it's not too late to make sure your crops grow up fed and happy. Regardless of your spring crop, Fed and Happy offers a variety of worm casting solutions in liquid and solid form to supercharge your soil, your yields, and your profitability. For fast, vibrant germination and seedling growth, mix your seed with Fed and Happy's screened granular castings pre-drilling. The Fed and Happy liquid seed treat and extracts offer the ideal mix of soluble solids loaded with living beneficial biology, mycorrhizal fungi, humates, and more. The Fed and Happy small spreadable castings are ideal for fast, easy soil incorporation. The large offer long-term stability and soil growth. But you don't have to figure this out on your own. Just call 833-GO-WORMS to speak with our farm team experts for a fast turnaround on a custom solution for your needs. Fare better against pests, disease, drought, and other potential hazards this season with Fed and Happy Worm Castings. Visit FedandHappy.com for a healthy harvest and any lawn, garden, and tree care needs. Available for pickup and on-farm delivery. That's F-E-D-N-Happy.com or call 833-GO-WORMS. Happy planting. You're listening to the Soil Sisters podcast, where we dig in on family farming and ranching, regenerative agriculture, healthy living, and planting seeds in our community. We invite you to listen, subscribe, and grow with the Soil Sisters. Hi, y'all. I'm Jo, host of the Soil Sisters podcast. And I'm joined here by my blood, soul, and soil sister, Crystal Newding. Crystal, thanks for deciding to do this with me. Thanks so much. I couldn't be happier. She's actually crying already, <laughs> but I knew that was going to happen. Like, get it together, Crystal. And our very first and super special guest on the Soil Sisters podcast, Chad Johnson. Chad is a master ecosystem designer. And he's just an amazing human who brings out the best in people. And he is going to drop wisdom and inspire everyone to, as my sister says, join the revolution. Yes. yes. Chad, thanks for coming and hanging out with us here in Lockhart, Texas. Thank you. Yeah, it's so great to be here with you both. And kind of synchronistic how this all came together. So, yes, thanks for having me. Yeah. So let's start the conversation, sister, with you preaching the gospel of joining the revolution. (laughs) We'll get everybody amped up and then get this party started. Yes. Well, welcome to the revolution. That's why we're here and that's what we're doing. And that is the revolution of life and love and communication and community and just making the world a better place. Like if we're not doing that, then what's the point? Life in our soil has been something that I've been focused on for a long time and working to help people understand because without life in our soil, there's no nutrients in our plants, no nutrients that the animals eat that then we then consume. So nutrient density in our food, more life in our body, more life in our lives, more love in our lives. That's the revolution that I'm so proud to be a part of. And connection here. With our community and our family, which is going to be a huge thread throughout this show, we are going to be documenting our own process of changing the land that we grew up on and helping people that we care about here in Caldwell County do the same with their family's land. Yes. So uh, Chad serendipitously re-entered our life at this amazing time. So, Chad, talk to us a little bit about what you're doing, which is um, how you'll kind of be incorporating into our lives. Yeah, so we're surrounded by nature. If we look at the creation around us or anything around us, it's all come from the earth. And we uh, are the spirit that depending on how we want to create our future, especially when we see what's unfolding all around us these days, that I'm here to tell people that more is possible than imagined. And I've been blown away over and over 
because there are secrets in nature that need to be told and not just told, but felt and lived and reveled in uh, your own little paradise or your piece of whatever you feel inside your heart to bring forward because uh, these are the times. I didn't see myself coming out again, but now I'm coming out and I feel like it's rolling thunder and all things are saying go and it's beautiful. Yeah, not looking back, but here to share how you can listen, read, and not just work with nature, but open up yourself, open up your heart, and see how you can incorporate your life into a more abundant, beautiful, healing, sacred, joyful space that nature can help amplify. Yes. Yes. Yes, please. Preach. Thank you. Yes. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. And in doing that, we are being of service to our families, our community, to Mother Earth. The whole. Like, yes. you know, once once we find our spot and we're doing that thing, like our purpose, the reason we are here, our gift that God gave us to share with the world, when we're doing that, life and work become play, and we're of service. I mean, I had an old boss that would just say, you know, what are you doing to be of service? And I'm like, I was in my early 20s, and I'm <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, buzz all like, I'm of service to myself, okay? But now, fulfilling myself through my gifts, I'm like, oh, I'm preaching the gospel of Mother Earth now. I've preached the gospel of cannabis for eight years, but it was like, I felt this calling to pivot and, you know, reached out to my sister and said, Hey, will you do this with me? Because being a solopreneur was lonely, isolating all of those things that I'm like, I need the wonder twin powers to activate and, you know, start drawing and calling in all of these people to help create this dream team for mother earth in our small little area, and then showcase that to people and let them do that in their own pockets of the world. I've been teaching people to live regenerative life, like to let your life regenerate you, and learning what I've learned about the soil and the life in it, and how much easier it is to grow in a regenerative system, that you're not constantly having to feed because you've depleted it beyond any ability to recover, which is what is happening to the land all over. And in doing so, the people who are doing that to the land are also being depleted because of the things that they're doing. And so having this opportunity to now take, because I've been teaching them about energy, like we're vibrational beings in a vibrational universe. People can't see that. Well, you can't see the life in the soil either until you put a microscope on it. So just helping people understand like the functions of life and how things work and for ourselves and in our practices, our farming practices, our gardening practices, our life work. So I am beyond thrilled. I love it that you asked me to do this. It makes me so happy. And it has really been an inspiration just to like share what I know through a different medium and really life and love. That is what I'm here to amplify. And we don't have to fight against. And furthermore, if you fight against, you're inviting more. You're pouring gasoline on fire you don't want. So if you can just bless our hearts, give your little cheek a pat and move in the direction of what you want. And that's what we're doing. So thank you. Yes, you are welcome. Now, Chad, your medium is the soil and the water and the sunshine and all of the things. And we met up yesterday at Town Lake and we did not get very far before you were stopping and <laughs> pulling up plants and eating leaves and flowers. And you were so excited with the things you were finding around here. Yeah. And I found as I go, there's more edible, there's more medicinal and actually landscapes can be healing for you. Gardens can be healing for you. And like you being sisters, there's a community, like you're saying, um, and we see these, these new practices, regenerative, 
we're born thinking that you need a tractor, you need fences and everything else. And sometimes it's great, but to realize you can start from where you are. And those kind of relationships, communities can take you uh, to a place you did not imagine. Because I did not imagine myself here. But I was willing to fearlessly step through. And what came was more opportunities. And I believe in these kind of times where we see what might look like complete destruction is actually the opportunity for recreation, rebirth. So you can think of yourself outside the constructs of who you thought you were. The elements that you're talking about are ancient, but now we can use them in new ways that have never been done before and are ready to be pioneered, expanded, and just opened up. So if people are inspired to do this sort of thing where they live, maybe it's on family land or community land, I want us to kind of talk through, no, soft talk, hate that. (laughs) I want us to talk through those early steps, like us going up to the property to walk it earlier before we got here and standing in a room full of stakeholders and, you know, the questions you were asking us and everyone speaking their gifts, like talk about how you even get this started to where it feels like. I can do this. Yeah. So when you mentioned dream time a little earlier, that is a big part of it. The imagination. And that's what's going to remove a lot of blockages and perceptions or trying to force where I say the path is the journey. You can create a destination, but be easy on yourself and make it joyful. Make it something you're excited about and love because anything's possible. So when you start, with in your heart or what is your dream. Um, Like today, we saw who all was involved and we all spoke from our hearts. And the things that came out that were unexpected and you see the, the gifts, the strengths, the visions, the goals, the passions, all those are the beginning of that dream. And there's different ways to dream. And you bring together all those different ways to dream to create something greater. Um, And I've seen it and developed it from my mentor and turned it into something called Imagineering. And so you may have different gifts that you didn't know that are still inside you. Like I did not see myself going into these dreams and going into different areas. And each of your gifts might be that and something else. So to allow the uh, the opening of the heart to be allowing yourself to dream beyond what you thought was actually possible. In my line of work, where I'm working with nature, and it's a marriage of all the strengths, visions, and goals, like I was saying, of the people, and then you you see that and you marry it with all the possibilities, potential, and benefits of the land. Even if it's a backyard, you can create your own little paradise. Or if it's something with uh, the the venture you guys have coming, is it's really exciting. I can feel my hands tingle when you guys were first talking about it, where it's, you can feel where it's coming from. And so that dream time and also giving yourself the, uh, the, the expanse to dream into that, just that beginning so that it gives you the, the journey or the first steps. So you're not trying to push towards a destination that will be there and it can always be changed, added, amended to, however, Because as you walk through these doors, other opportunities present themselves. And as these other opportunities present themselves, now you can go into that part of dreaming and the direction you want to take or the path as the journey and destination. The reason I really like the path is the destination is that so many times we have an expectation of what something's going to be and then it it's not panning out that way. And so that keeps you from having those feelings of failure and like, well, I don't know what I'm doing instead of like, oh, nature is revealing something else to me. Oh, this isn't actually where we should go. We should pivot. So it, it just makes, I don't know, makes me feel more 
easy light on my feet. Well, and the the path as the destination, so many people, we're heading somewhere, and when I get there, I'll be happy. But if the path is the destination, you get to be happy every day. That's that's exactly it. And that's so important because our moments are precious. These moments right here with you are precious to me. So if you can keep almost that, you know, hold that, the precious, the gratitude, the gratefulness, the eyes open and realizing that you can recreate your life beyond what you thought it was. And when you do it, when you're calling on things as what you guys are bringing forward, there are things that are activated and forces and things guiding and coming in that you don't realize that I don't even completely understand when it comes to things like what some would term nature spirits or great spirit or holy spirit. These things are much larger than us. We see this physical. Rudolf Steiner would say to go upstream from the physical, even if it's like bacteria in the soil, and look at the formative forces of what's coming into being. And you can do that even with your own life. You can think of it as an inner garden or inner landscape. Mm-hmm. So that's, uh, keep that keep that precious peace, you know, held inside of you. I love that. I also love how you have this idea of the people on your team, the people in your community, like this is your garden. And so, you know, just referring to your everyday life, your living life, just the way you, you regard the soil, like what are the best companion plants? You know, are these people serving my highest good or the highest good of our project? And making sure you're aligning with people that have a, a shared vision and are doing things for the, the right reasons. And when we do that, it regenerates us. So we're not depleted. We're not wasting ourselves away, working hard at something that is hard. Instead, we give our precious energy and our divine inspiration and inspired action to this greater vision that we couldn't have come up with all on our own. Exactly. And those pieces and people can be very simple. And when you have the heart to feel into that and bring them together, then it creates something even greater. There's a synergistic or coming together that when you look back, it it seems very simple. But if you hadn't brought them all together, it wouldn't have blossomed like you see it blossoming. Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can think just a month ago, this felt way harder than it does today. Oh, yeah. Based on the unfolding of everything. Mm -hmm. Just calm down, Crystal. (laughs) You don't have to figure it all out. You don't have to figure it all out. You just have to relax and breathe and feel better right now about the potential that's there. And then all of a sudden, an idea. And, you know, one of the things that really helped me so much, because I've been like, how do I design a food forest? I'm like, no, darling, you don't design a food forest. You just stop trying. You're you're going too far. Like, just start where you are. And I was reading one of my microbiology books. <laughs> and I'm like, life, life, put life in the soil. Like, do not think about anything else. But other than how you are going to just add life to the soil. And that is whether that's my amendments that I put in my worm compost, my worm castings, or that's the life in my vision, in my focus, in my heart that I can just feel that I want to be there. Like however it is, because it it will come and here's a month later and we're sitting with Chad. And that is something that I didn't think about before then. That may have been around the time that I reached out to you because you just came into my mind and I was like, oh my God, I have to get in touch with Chad. And I did. And you were, you answered immediately. So it was, it was perfect. But yeah, before that, I was just like, it's too big for me. And you know what it is? It is. So just relax and you can then do your piece and you can invite the other people whose brilliance and genius is that piece. So what a blessing. It makes it more of a joy too. Yes, you do not is. have to do everything. You don't have to figure everything out. I often tell the people I'm working with is you're building a bridge in front of you oh, yeah. and the pieces are going to be much simpler than you think, especially mm-hmm. once you see it from start to finish or the right people just come in and, 
and call them and do prayer, do intention, do whatever you do that, you know, connects you with that. Um, I've seen it over and over. And yeah, I, I feel like the analogy of when you don't know what you're doing, but you're moving forward with it is you're creating this living bridge. Um, yeah, there's, there's more that can be accomplished than you realize. And like I said, there are, there are greater forces out there that when you make decisions or you take that first step, you are going to see that things are changing, things are opening up. And these are the times to do it. Yes. I had a conversation with Dion the other night. I was thinking of several different things. And all of a sudden, it just forces seen and unseen will show up to support you. And I just told her, I immediately turned around. I'm like, I have to interrupt whatever you're doing. Sorry. This is what I need you to know. Like physical and non-physical will be there to support us for whatever we need, want. And the next day we drove to Abilene and I had a flat on the side of the road. And the guy that came and aired it up was just big old guy, strong, his wife sitting up in the tow truck. And he changed my tire in no time and then literally followed me at 50 miles per hour back into town so that I could get my tire changed by another set of angels. And it's like, I didn't even have to, I just knew it. And then the next day I was sitting on the road <laughs> getting my roadside assistance, but just knowing like forces seen and unseen are coming to your aid. So when we have that knowing, then you can just relax. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to worry. You don't have to feel like you have to do it all yourself because the person that knows exactly what to do is right there. And when you are worried or scared or in that lower vibration, you're free to create. Yes. And make magic. Yeah. Collaborate, do fun things. And so for all of the naysayers who are like, mm, you're going to try to create a paradise in West Texas. I love what you shared earlier that not one single time has it ever not worked. Exactly. <laughs> when you are conspiring with nature and using the benefits of the land and using your intelligence and your intention and feeding the soil and collaborating and doing all of the things, it always works. And to give people a picture, because you're listening to us talk about like words we're throwing around like paradise, these spaces are much different than your typical garden. I learned from my mentor, who to me is the world master, hands down, and he taught me everything and blew me away when I thought I knew everything and broke a lot of things that I thought were, you know, just preconceptions. Uh, and that's why I say more is possible. So walking into a three-dimensional earth forms, ancient living systems of terraces, but you can do them artistically. And my epiphany, or one of them, is that you make it for human healing, human habitation, so that you want to go out into your garden, you want to sleep in your garden, you want to sing. I've seen many people walk in and they begin crying because you can transform a flat piece of ground into a three-dimensional paradise. But then you're also all the elements, earth, wind, soil, fire, you are now bringing in all the benefits of doing that in a completely unknown way that takes those ancient cues and takes all the high level masters and tech that we've seen, all the existing food forests from 3,000 years ago, and what is all the best things, ideas, and everything to bring together to make something that outperforms and is super abundant, uh, is super resilient, thrives on climate extremes, and there is, yeah, there's no reason for fear, honestly. And it is one thing to imagine it. And that brings into the things if you have the capacity to imagine. That's why I brought in Imagineering. But when you go into the space, then you can imagine there and you get a little closer. And then you see pictures of these systems where you're going through an archway and all of a sudden what I call the earth hug is wrapping around you. And there's secret pathways and destinations and spots that the overwhelming beauty with the animals or birds or pollinators, the edible flowers. Uh, maybe you've set up a waterfall and it's 
it can even be done simply with solar power. Because what's out there now was not available before. There's so many things available now. There's plants, trees, wild, bizarre, delicious, beautiful edibles that are pouring out from all corners of the earth. Millions beyond your imagination are coming out that I could not have imagined. And think of me being in Minnesota. You know, we come down to Texas. Being up in Minnesota, uh, it, it works there. It works anywhere. And I have nine different kinds of kiwi. Wow. I have no fences. I have no real compost regimen. I have no irrigation system. The worms are my plows and everything's thriving because I have a living mulch that is reseeding itself or growing more every year. So they're overproducing abundant systems. This is the image of Garden of Eden that we all hold inside of us and now is possible. So I love this. Talk a little bit about the wildlife, the animals in your ecosystem and how you talk about guiding them. Yeah. So you look at a garden and, you know, sometimes a fence is appropriate, but it's not really always appropriate. It depends on where you plant, how you plant and what else you do to either steer animals or create habitat. So I'm creating habitat three dimensionally where there's many aspects. There's a diversity of plants. There's actually a tension of predator prey so that the weasel that lives in my garden, like I was telling you, does not touch my ducks or chickens for years because he's got all the things he needs. And of course, they all want to hang out by the pond, like with the groundhogs. And we watch the babies being born and they, they dig into the terraces and make their own little terrace veranda, which I've caught my now peeking ducks hanging out side by side touching fur to feather, mm -hmm. the painter turtle and one of my ducks on a little cattail island touching, like we're chilling out together. Okay. This is like the predator and prey perception is then has to be like in your mind destroyed because just like the word invasive, the war is over. Yeah. When you're putting billions of dollars into poisons, the word invasive brings the thought of a fight, of a war. And when you use words like uh, obnoxious, invasive, weed, and the many other words, is that um, you can use these plants and even the pollinators and animals and birds because they bring a force of nature you don't see and use them to their greatest benefit, you know, for their highest and best. And the more you see that, the more the pattern keeps coming back. And when you do something and you're not sure, that's great. Experiment. Let your wildest dreams go. And nature will respond. Nature will respond positively if you've done something positive. And if not, now it's giving you the lesson and the learning to which I've always had my greatest epiphanies from those. So that you just, it only gets better. And these systems as they age only gain in resilience. And I think it's important to study the native species, like just walking around with you, and I can do this too with sister, is picking something up and her or you being able to tell me the medicinal benefit of it. And so I think the majority of everyone's mentality is that if it's not grass or it's not the fruit or vegetable that I want to eat, then it's a weed and it's bad and it's got to go. So it's like getting a little bit more intimate with the native species around you and seeing what you can do with it. And if it's medicine or food or, you know, a beneficial plant that's going to keep the predators off of your tomatoes, like, you know, whatever it might be. Oh, yeah. And it's getting way easier than when I started because just listen to us communicating now and the people that we can reach now so that information is accelerated. These, uh, these are done the same way in these living systems. And when done right, you can accelerate that abundance, which is called in the nature kingdom, a trophic cascade. So we can accelerate these by seeing what works best and what accelerates it. So looking at the plants and what they're for, or what they do, or what are their benefits, instead of deeming something like for mine, 
was it was all reed canary grass. And so that was where the war was at with that plant. And then what I did with my style of gardening was I put it at the core of my beds in the terraces. So it became like a organic core or compost going on inside of these beds. And it turns out this plant is one of the highest concentrations of DMT on the planet is released in all living organisms, but in concentrations in us when we're born, when we die, and when we dream. So to really, really realize, and you don't have to be hard on yourself, because we all do this, this, this bird's eating all my grapes or my cherries. That's saying the cherries are ready. There's, uh, to just let everything fall away and just enjoy the journey yeah. is so huge. And what is there to learn from this? Um, another way to do it is you take a picture with your phone and now you can just like on the iPhone, there's like an eye on there. You yeah. tap the eye, it says plant, hit plant, and then it'll tell you what it probably is. And it's pretty accurate. Yeah. It, those have only gotten better. Yeah. And yeah, that is like AI a just gateway. Keeps getting smarter. Mm -hmm. So that is accelerating it. It's accelerating it. And there's many ways that that's happening especially within communication, identification. And pretty soon it's going to have, where I can see it going, is it's going to tell you all the benefits of it, the medicinal, yes, the culinary, which are usually an overlap. So I'm always planting out, let's say I set up a garden, I've buried the seed bed that I don't have to wrestle with, or at least in the places I want to. And then I broadcast out Maybe it's 10, 20, 30 to 50 different kinds of seeds that are going to build the soil. They're edible. They're medicinal. They're for pollinators. They're a living mulch. They're exuding healing chemicals that are benefiting not only the system, the birds, the animals, being homes for everything around, but are also synergistically doing that with all the other plants, trees, and together you bring in something greater. So if you go out and let's say I collect all the blossoms and the leaves that I know are edible, and as you learn more, this magic salad or super salad now becomes more potent. And if you think of people getting high from alkaline foods, yeah, a lot of the new growth, it's protected from animals and things from being eaten because it's more alkaline. And it's more than just alkaline you're eating something that's living and you bring it together with all these other ones. And now you have your magic salad or your super salad. Yes. Yeah. I like that fig leaf today. It that was delicious. It had like the essence of fig, but I swear at the end, it tasted like a peach. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I mean, it was, would be delightful in a salad. So many possibilities. Yes. No, that's and fun. when you turn <clears throat> the way that you're looking at what you're seeing, into a benefit. We were standing outside the um, chill at Soham and she was like, oh, it's just all these weeds here. And I said, they are here. This is triage. The soil needs something. And these plants are specifically here to make this better. And just that shift in perspective from this is unwanted to this is literally supporting me and the earth that I'm standing on, then that literally shifts things in your body and allows you to receive benefit that you couldn't receive before because you had no idea. Yes. And it's amazing just seeing in our world, the blockages being removed in people, um, how I think it's now 45% of people work from home or remotely. Mm -hmm. Uh, the veils with current geopolitical dropping so people can see things in big ag, which I never thought 20 years ago was going to happen, in big pharma yeah. and other things. It's all being revealed. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing time to be alive. Yeah, It is. It's also a time for people to step up and accept responsibility as well because – just like we would posted on mm -hmm. social the other day, the average farmer is over 60 years old and they'll be retiring. And just like what's happening in our family, where there's a generational gap of knowledge of how to work the land and 
be a steward or the desire to do it. Mm -hmm. And so then there's going to be 350 million <clears throat> acres of land that is either going to get farmed by someone or get bought up by corporations. And that's scary. So it's like, okay, it's time to show up and stand up. And there are so many people our age in our 40s and 50s that are just like, okay, enjoy the city, ready to buy some land and learn how to farm and take care of my family and simplify my life. Yeah. And so we want those people to be able to design their own paradise. Yeah. To know and, that they can. And much simpler than you think. Yeah. And you can start simple. You can start small. I mean, if it makes sense for you. But the one thing I want to say is, as it's always evolved, you know, if you look at your diet and you always see it from when you're small, it's always kind of evolving in ways that what I do is uh, open up people's imaginations by listening to them and seeing them and what they would like to do. And I start to name off a dozen different income streams that overlaps with their life. So suddenly they're making passive income from, it might be they have people volunteering their land to help them and it's an Airbnb or whatever scenario it is, you get to you know, paint your canvas. You yeah. get to think outside the box so that you can live outside the box. Yeah. You. And this is what we've been talking about at the ranch. With just based on my background of events and media and marketing and us desiring to design our own paradise between the big ranch house, the bunk house, and the house where we grew up and be able to create this space and then have people out and experience it and learn how to do it and create a revenue stream that has nothing to do with ranching. Yeah, And I think it does take someone to either inject new blood into it, you know, because once you've been doing it, your granddaddy did it and his granddaddy did it you have those blinders on. So whether or not it's introducing somebody like Chad or involving other people in the family or the community, but families need to begin a future, I was calling it future farm planning, but now I want to call it something more magical. <laughs> you know, what is this paradise that you want to leave your grandkids, 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 like yeah. thinking way bigger and further into the future. Yeah, that's, you've, you've really nailed it because that's where we have the, the paradigm or the thought of what is a ranch? What is a farm? You know, these things like cornfields, tractors, barns, which are all great. Maybe it's part of it, but there's something even bigger to really like realize the potential of that is much greater. And just like you said, some of your gifts bring in your gifts and your passions for sure. Um, because that's going to be part of the fire. And that's what we want everyone to do. If everyone is living their passion and sharing their gifts, then where's the problem? Like there is no problem. If each individual in the family who's participating or in the community is living their best and fullest, most regenerative life, like doing things that feed their soul and feed their body and feed their family, and it just ripples out from there. And that that is the revolution because this is possible. And this is what we're doing here individually in Lockhart, Texas. Like can't even believe how magical this place is. And what a wonderful tribe, community tribe that we have got that are all coming together and these people that are brilliant in their own ways and just encouraging that. And if it doesn't feel good, maybe that's not right for you. And just look at that because we've been taught that life is hard and then you die. This sucks and you're just going to have to deal with that. That's just the way it is, hon. And you know what? It's not. And you don't. And it can be different. And we're doing it. And I'm so happy to show 
other people than it can be done. Because whether or not it's we're physically doing it yet, living it, breathing it, walking it, talking it, like moving ourselves forward. I feel the energy behind me and I am I'm so excited. What? <laughs> I said unstoppable. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and yes. even these old farmers, you know, they it's great and it was necessary then. And it's easier for uh let's say young excited minds to come up with new innovative things. And older people might be like, no, you can't do it that way. You got to do it this way. And that's fine. Let that be there. Yeah. Uh, because there are things they know that could suddenly benefit in ways. Yes. And to give them that space, just kind of honoring the elders for everything. And then realizing that the situation in a year or two may change like you've probably experienced. Yes. that, And it's beautiful. It's all bringing it back home for you. That's well, and I, we're excited to work with our dad on a oh project. God, yes. It's like, thank you. Yes, let's do this. Well, and you know what part, I think when we were able to, because we just let it go and with all the love, let it go. But then we had a conversation in October and he was talking about, hey, grazer, you either feed it to your cattle, you graze it, you make hay or you grow it for seed. And I was like, you know how to grow hemp then because it's that's literally what we're going to do so you already know and now tell us help us because before he didn't understand you know what i'm saying but in that moment when he explained to me i was like okay so what do you do with this hay grazer and he laid it out and i was like boom there you are you already know and it was just like i saw something come over his face and then just like oh okay and then at christmas time let's grow hemp. And we said, okay, let's do that. So here we are. The ask was just five acres. Like, may we please just do an experiment? And then at Christmas, he was like, how about uh, we do 80 acres? We're like, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. You planted 80 acres of hay grazer. <laughs> for two years in a row and didn't have a great success. And I'm like, great. So what's one more year of well, yeah, I testing? Think it, and hemp remediates soil. There's absolutely. so many benefits yeah. to it too. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so one thing I want to talk about that is ranch specific, when we have the conversation about, you know, directing the animals and wild boar is something that people in ranch country mm -hmm. in Texas and, uh, you know, a lot of other places deal with. So have you had any experience with that? Are you working on that with anyone? We did at Kyle's and they actually fenced their property and trapped them. And I think they ate some of them and whatever else. This next one at one song, we'll probably encounter it, but um, there hasn't been anything that hasn't been manageable. They may, if they rough up the ground, you might want to steer them from a field. And just what comes to mind right off the bat is there's now super light mobile electric fence that might fit some people's situation. It might be someone in your area is like, I'll take care of those hogs for you, like at Kyle's. Yeah. Well, and we do have someone that will go up in a helicopter once or twice a year and mow down about 200 of them. Yeah. And so for me, it was white-tailed deer. They were like all over. And what Sep taught was you give room for all the animals and you come up with your epiphanies to steer them. So we came up with thorny barriers and that was part of his idea too, was we planted out thorny barriers that they couldn't get through, but then it's also the wild roses. So the petals were in the super salad and in medicines for the heart and it was for pollinators. It was also a trellis for the kiwi. So we have nine different kinds of kiwi. So multiple uses and multiple things, thinking outside the box. Some people, it might make sense to use blackberries. They're so impenetrable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the wild boar will root under and you know mow down a fence. And so a while back, they stopped putting the lowest rung of barbed wire on the fence just to be like, just let them just go. go. <laughs> just let them go through. They've torn up way too many fences. So 
we'll have to dream on mm-hmm. that. Sister. I, maybe they're I'm not going to prefer about- the hemp over like maybe a wheat field. Um, and I'm just saying that kind of observe because that's a huge part. You do things and then when you step back and observe, that's when you're starting to, you know, that's the response from nature. Mm-hmm. So this is a great, I wish I could say, just do A, B, and C. Oh, yeah. But there is no real cookie cutter. But the beautiful thing is that you can observe and you can come up with things. And if you find that one, two, or three things, everybody benefits. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And just like the war on plants is like the war on pigs. Yeah. But then let's look at the benefits and everything else that can be done. If you want a field plowed, invite those pigs in. I know. Seriously. (laughs) Yep. All right. Um, Is there something specific or particular where you want to take the conversation? Or you, looking at you as well? Um, I just want to say, check out what these ladies are doing. And they're in this Texas area, but I think they want to support whoever else on their journey. And from the sounds of it, they have other many dynamic things to do. So... Get a hold of them, plug in wherever you want, uh, introduce yourself. Do not be shy because this is the time to do. I have a really good feeling about this year. Yes. I think it's gonna be a it's gonna be a movie and it's gonna be a you can create a fairy tale. Yes. The opportunities and the beauty and people willing to change and get out there is already happening. It's gonna be a thrilling fairy tale. Thrilling. It's so exciting, and there is literally nothing to worry about. There's not one single thing that we cannot do and that cannot be done. Somebody's already done it. So just relax, feel into what it is that you want, and then open yourself. And the ideas will come. The people will show up. The things that we need will always be available to us if we can just keep ourselves calm and focused in a way that is like, really toward our dream. I love Imagineering. I love that. And I've heard it before from another magical person. And I'm just like, yes, yes, I love that. And that's what we're doing. It's engineering through our imagination and spending more time dreaming and feeling excited about what we want instead of worrying about how we could possibly get that or how it feels too big for us. I mean, it really is. It's just like, you're paying attention. It's you're giving your energetic money to something. Give it to something that you want. So go outside, go into your backyard if you think it's ugly or you hate it and you've been wanting to do something and there's piles of things everywhere and take off your shoes and your socks and ground down into your own earth, your own backyard and connect with Mother Earth and Ask her to inspire you and inspire the space and get inspired to follow at Soil Sisters Podcast on Instagram. Yes. Check out kingdomcome.earth to connect with Chad and see all of the magical things that he is building. You can see before and after pictures and just allow yourself to get excited about doing that thing that you've been putting off for a really, really long time. You have an early spring. I'm in a tank top. The guy from Minnesota had to go buy some shorts. (laughs) He is looking stylish in his shorts and work boots, I will tell you that. But this has been a wonderful way to kick off the Soil Sisters podcast. I hope you are inspired to subscribe and join us on this journey. We will soon reveal our big sponsor, And be able to start sharing pictures and videos and getting this party started. So thank you, Chad, for being our very first guest. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and everybody, go outside and dream. Sleep outside. Bring a glass of water. Yeah. Soak it in. Yeah, just carry one of those REI hammocks in your pocket. (laughs) That's what Chad does. (laughs) Love it. All right. Well, thank you all for hanging out. Connect with the Soil Sisters at txsoilsisters.co. Submit questions, guest or show ideas, and sponsorship inquiries. The Soil Sisters podcast was created and produced by Joanna Newding. Editing and sound design are in the capable hands of the PodConnects Podcast Network.